What do you bring to the table, hmm? Hello everyone, I'm Sarah from Everyday Starlet. Welcome to my channel. I make videos to inspire you to be the star of your own life. I want to talk about the gifts that the feminine brings to the world, specifically the feminine as the oracle. Now we've all heard this trend of men asking women, what do you bring to the table? And it occurs to me that we as a society in general do not value the gifts that the divine feminine brings to the world as much as we acknowledge the gifts that the masculine traditionally gives to the world. And if you're not familiar with what I mean by the masculine and the feminine, I have a lot of videos on this topic on my channel, so I'm not going to dive into this too much in this video. However, most men are masculine at their core and most women are feminine at their core. We operate at our best when we are in our natural core energies. The masculine tends to be uh, the protector, the provider, the giver, the one with structure, direction. The masculine is the mind, whereas the feminine is the body. The feminine is the one who opens, receives. The feminine is the energy of life, is, is heart, is love. Creator, the feelings, sensations, emotions, things like that. But because we have a society that values things that are more masculine, you know, how much money do you earn? How much money do you have? How much does this cost? How much can you produce? Industries, things like that. We tend to value things that are more masculine traditionally, whereas things that are more feminine, because they're less tangible, it's harder for most people, especially if they're masculine-minded, to see these things as having value. And I think a lot of women even, because we have a society that is so masculine-based, it's difficult for many women to really see their own strengths and values. And if as women, if we can't see our own feminine value and what the feminine brings to the world, that much more difficult for the masculine, for men, to be able to see what the feminine truly brings to the world. Now a man who is truly embodied in his divine masculine energy will truly appreciate and love the gifts that the natural divine feminine brings to the world in the relationships. However, unfortunately, because in our society we do have a lot of people who really are not fully connected to their healthy masculine energy or even their healthy feminine energy. We have a lot of wounding and traumas and reverse polarities and all kinds of stuff going on in our society. A lot of us are just confused. But because we have a more masculine-minded society in general, we start putting like a checklist on the things that women do in the same way that we put like a list and structure on the things that men do. Whereas the things that a feminine woman brings to a masculine partner or to the world is so far beyond just a checklist of of chores in the home or a checklist of things that she does. It's not necessarily as much of a tangible thing. And one of the greatest gifts that the feminine brings to herself, the world, her masculine partner, is her heart wisdom, her inner wisdom and her intuition. Now it is actually scientifically proven that women in general have a heightened intuition that is stronger than most men's intuition. Many people believe that's a survival skill. It's seen even in infant children. Little girls tend to be more responsive to people's shifts and energies and things like that than young boys are, which many people believe is a survival skill because as women, we're not as strong as men physically. So we need to know when danger arises before men would need to because we are gonna need to find safety. However, the feminine, the divine feminine, which is what most women would be naturally at their core if we were allowed to grow up to be our natural feminine selves. If you are truly feminine at your core, your heart wisdom and your intuition is one of your greatest gifts. It's truly one of your greatest gifts to yourself, to the world, to your masculine partner. You are literally the, a walking oracle. There is a psychic quality to that. Now, I don't mean like psychics with the like Miss Cleo with the crystal ball, like let me read your future. I'm talking about literally having an inner wisdom and an inner knowing. A lot of things in our society block women from this inner wisdom and this inner knowledge and this oracle. Foods that we eat today and a lot of the chemicals that are messing with our hormones, medications, even medications like the pill, but also psychiatric medications. And again, I'm not a doctor. I'm not here to tell you what medications you should be on or what medications you shouldn't be on, but I do think it's important 
for you to be aware that these things can affect how your body is naturally. The way we are in society are distractions. A lot of the stuff we do, spending your time scrolling on social media, spending your time being up all night, not getting enough sleep, not taking care of your body because the feminine is the body, right? And I don't mean this in a, you need to fit into a societal beauty standard. It has nothing to do with that. Like that's zero to do with that. It only means treating your body like it is, it's the sacred vessel that it is. Like treating your body with love and respect. That's what I'm talking about. Owning the fact that your feminine body is so powerful. So many women hate their bodies. We're conditioned to hate our bodies. That's another reason why women are so disconnected. When you're disconnected from your body because you hate your body, because you hate how your body looks, you're literally disconnecting from your inner wisdom. That's why it's so important for women to learn to love their bodies. And you can love your body and still wanna make changes to it, totally fine that's up to you you can love your body and you know weigh whatever you weigh or be whatever age it is or whatever like none of that has anything to do with anything it's just about how you treat your body and loving your body treating your body in loving ways that's what i'm talking about the more as women we hate our bodies and we mistreat our bodies the more disconnected we are these things are so important to connecting to your feminine energy is really owning and embodying who you are as a woman embodying the fact that you're a woman i know it can be difficult in society where we can't even define what a woman is but i'm truly telling you as a woman Please learn to connect with your body, to love your body, accept your body because the more we as women value our bodies and the beautiful power and wisdom in our bodies, the more we'll be able to connect to it. And in reality, let's be honest, if you as a woman think that, oh, I don't have any of that psychic wisdom, I don't have any of that, think back in your life to your heartbreaks, your disappointments, mistakes you've made. Look back at all of those things. Truly tap in, connect with your heart, and ask yourself, did you know that was gonna happen? I'm willing to bet most of you, if you really were honest with yourself, would say, yeah, I knew that was gonna happen. I know that's true because I can say that for myself. I talk to a lot of women, I know that. I mean, that's not to say as women we can't be blindsided, but in every situation as women, there was always a part of us that, that was like screaming to us in different ways. Whether sometimes I've known women, this doesn't happen to me personally, but I know women who have been in a relationship with a man and they would keep getting like yeast infections or something. Couldn't figure out why for the life of them they kept getting them. And then they would end a relationship and realize how destructive the relationship was and realize how many things they were ignoring that were red flags in a person. And the minute they get out of that relationship, they never have a yeast infection ever again. I've heard that story so many times. It can be something like a medical situation or something. It can be anything really. It can be just a little voice in your head or a voice in your, in your heart or in your gut or somewhere in your body. It's gonna be a little voice that goes, this is a bad idea or you should be doing this instead and we override it very often as women because we think that somebody else knows best. I can tell you every time I've listened to somebody else tell me what I should do and make a decision for me that I was like, mm, I don't know about that, but like I should listen to them because they know more than I do. Every single time I've ended up thinking, yeah, should have listened to myself. That's not to say that you can't take advice from other people. It's not to say you can't you know, learn from other people. But at the end of the day, you need to tap into your body and say, okay, how is this feeling? Do I feel safe in this moment? Do I feel like this is a good move? Like tapping into that, incredible, incredible gift to yourself. It's the basis of connecting to your feminine energy. Honestly, for me personally, I know there's a lot of people that talk about feminine energy, that talk about connecting to your feminine, being more feminine, all this kind of stuff. And a lot of them will tell you to wear a pretty dress, to wear makeup, to wear heels, to wear this, to wear that. Do Pilates and stop lifting weights and don't be a boss babe and live a soft life and all this kind of thing and I'm not telling you that any of those things are right or wrong I love my pretty dresses I personally would love to live a soft life and not be a boss babe you know it, whatever you decide to do is on you that advice is not wrong however if you were to ask me what the most important aspect to connecting to your feminine energy is I will tell you it's connecting to your intuition and your heart wisdom. Most important aspect to connecting to your feminine. Because in order to fully tap into your feminine energy, you need to feel safety. In order to feel safety, you need to know that you will be okay. And in order to do that, you need to be able to trust your inner wisdom. Because your inner wisdom is what keeps you safe. Now when you tap into that inner wisdom, it's a gift to yourself because it will keep you safe. It will let you know 
what your next move is. It will let you know what you need to do. It's a matter of paying attention to those signs. Now, one of the things I would advise is when people start, and I was guilty of this for sure, when people start tapping into that intuition, that inner wisdom, you can get caught up in, and I'm not knocking any of these things, you can get caught up in tarot cards, oracle cards, pendulums, you can get caught up in all kinds of gurus and things like that crystals all kinds of symbols numerology things like that i'm not knocking any of that stuff like that stuff can all be fun like i still enjoy some of that stuff but i will say if you get so caught up in these outside things it just becomes another substitute to tap out of your own intuition and into something outside of you so i'll use the example where i have uh the divine feminine oracle decks that i love and I was first kind of learning to tap into this stuff and I will tell you every time I would use that oracle deck I would get a goddess that would come out or goddess or some kind of divine feminine symbol that would come out at me that would be exactly what I needed to hear in that moment. But I didn't live my life by it. I would take the lesson, I would I would just like embody it and I would move on. But I will say I also had this experience not too long ago where I met this guy totally thought it was like the way we met the way we connected the timing of it i was like oh my god this is gonna be my soulmate i was totally caught up in this i was like i've done so much healing work and this is gonna be the man for me and i was totally caught up in this and i went questioning about him i did all these kind of like exercises i got from like a guru about how to tap into like is he my soulmate or isn't he i did all these visualizations i was using like tarot cards and I have like a pendulum every single time I would ask the pendulum is he my soulmate even when I tried to trick it it would tell me that he was every single time and I was using that as like an, a reason why this man must be the man I meant to be with well as I actually got to know him it became overwhelmingly clear that he was not the man I was meant to be with that he was actually an old trauma from my past that I still needed to heal. It was very painful, but I'm very grateful to the experience because it did really open me up to a lot of healing. I'm grateful that this man was in my life at a certain point. I have no ill will, but it was an important lesson. Not only that I still needed healing, but also that I was so caught up in finding these outside symbols that in reality I was ignoring the part of my body that was kind of like, hey, <laughs> you felt this way before, your body knows more than you do. It got me ignoring things that were important. So that's another aspect to this that I want to point out because I do think that oftentimes as women, and I, I do know there are a lot of women that sometimes when they start tapping into their feminine energy, they can turn to something like organized religion or something like that or oftentimes certain gurus or certain spiritual leaders and and look I've I've taken a lot of online courses I've studied with a lot of people I've studied a lot of books and resources and courses and all kinds of stuff learned a lot learned some things that I don't agree with as well and I'm not knocking organized religion for some people it can work really well but I also think it's important to not use those things as a way of disconnecting to yourself to your own self your own inner wisdom feeling into your body and connecting to your body and your own wisdom always the most important thing it's important to learn to trust it which takes time and patience so if you're used to being very disconnected from your body and you're learning to tap into it be patient with yourself. But I would highly recommend that you learn to tap into your body. Doesn't mean you can't learn from other people. Doesn't mean you can't study other things. Doesn't mean you can't learn about crystals and tarot cards and stuff like that. This stuff can all be fun. But it's so important to tap into your body because that's always the most important thing. Your body, your heart wisdom as the feminine woman, that's your home base. That's where you need to get back to. That's where you need to tune into. So those are some ways that I would suggest that women learn to start tapping into their heart wisdom and their inner feminine oracle. Working with your cycle is really important. I understand that some people have certain conditions and irregular cycles, things like that. I would highly recommend that you work towards trying to heal your cycle in different ways. And I also have a video up with some book recommendations and some of them are book recommendations about tapping into your cycle. I have a video about your cycle as well. So I actually find it ironic that I actually used to when I was younger, I always made it like a pact with myself that I would never make a decision, like an important decision while I was bleeding or when I was PMSing because I was convinced that I was going to make an emotional, irrational decision about something. When in reality, and what I do now is I actually tap into my intuition more when I'm actually, you know, in my moon cycle. 
when I'm in my bleed, I actually find that I'm so much more intuitive. I'm more open to things coming in. That's actually the time when I feel like my intuition is actually heightened. But it's interesting when you start reframing and start working with your cycle and learning to love your cycle. I love every phase of my cycle. I really do now. And learning to tap into the beautiful ebbs and flows of your cycle can really be an amazing way of tapping into your feminine body and your heart wisdom. Now, these are ways that the feminine can connect to her heart wisdom for herself. As far as the world and society, I mean, as I mentioned before, pretty much everything in our world and society is designed to disconnect women from their bodies. Why is that? Because when women connect to their bodies, they're incredibly powerful. Like we are incredibly powerful beings. We're connected to nature. We're connected to each other. Nature is incredibly powerful. We all know that. Women are together when we're actually, and why do you think we tend to cycle together when we are together? It's because that's when women can really harness their power together, harness their sisterhood. And the more women that actually step into connecting to our wisdom and our, our our intuition and we start all doing that together the more powerful women are and the more powerful the divine feminine in all of us becomes and that's not in an egoic way of well because the feminine could take over the world it's not about that it's about the feminine really owning her power because when the divine feminine knows her power she inspires the divine masculine to fall in line with his power it's an aspect of the dark feminine that i've talked about in my dark feminine energy video and i have a lot of requests to do more topics on the dark feminine so i'll get into that one of the beautiful aspects of the feminine intuition and the, the oracle wisdom is knowing when to use your light feminine and when to use your dark feminine. And as I mentioned in my dark feminine energy video, your dark feminine energy is designed to destroy the masculine ego. The masculine ego is incredibly dangerous to the world. When a man is living from his ego, he's dangerous. He's dangerous to himself, other men, women, children, the world. A truly aligned masculine man, a healthy masculine man, is essential to the world. If men are living from ego, they're not safe. The divine feminine is basically like that alarm sign that is like, hey buddy, you're not living up to your true divine masculine self. I'm gonna destroy your ego. The dark feminine wants to destroy the masculine ego because the masculine ego serves no one except himself. The dark feminine wants to destroy the masculine ego. Your inner wisdom, your, your, your feminine oracle, will tell you when that dark feminine is needed and when your light feminine is needed. And that's for yourself, but also for the world. It's knowing when to band together in sisterhood and stand up to something. And I go into this a little bit more in my dark feminine energy video about the difference between the dark feminine, like our triggers and traumas. So I'm not gonna dive into that here. Knowing as a feminine being, like when is the time to step into that dark feminine? When is the time to tap into my huntress energy of fighting for something I believe in? Or my wild woman that's gonna do something unconventional with the world? Tapping into that as far as the world and society goes, your heart will tell you. Your heart wisdom will tell you when that's necessary. And the more that you are tapped into your body, the more you know when, okay, what I need to bring right now is my light feminine. What I need to bring right now is my dark feminine. I need more of my lover energy right now. I need more of my huntress energy right now. It's how you show up to the world and your heart wisdom, your own oracle, will tell you how to show up. It will also help guide you in the direction of where you wanna go. So let's talk about what the feminine oracle brings to her masculine partner. Now I touched on this a little bit, talking about it with society, but I'm gonna dive into this a little bit more. When you get the concept of like, what do women bring to a relationship, newsflash, the biggest gift that a feminine woman is going to bring to a masculine partner is her feminine oracle. It's her intuition, it's her heart wisdom. The masculine is the mind, the feminine is the body. Masculine can have the direction, but the feminine heart wisdom informs the masculine direction. When we talk about masculine leadership, it is not about the man just saying, okay, this is what we're gonna do to hell with everybody else. Because that's not gonna feel safe. And at the end of the day, for most men, their ego is gonna kick in and nobody's gonna be safe. And they're probably not gonna make very good decisions. The feminine oracle is the one who guides. It's the one who lets the masculine know when he is in alignment and when he's not because the feminine is responsive the feminine responds to how the masculine shows up when the feminine ain't happy it's because the masculine has not shown up in a way that she feels open safe and receptive to if you have a healthy aligned masculine man he's gonna take that oracle wisdom 
and use that to his advantage and use that to inspire him to step up and be great and use that to help inform his direction. If the masculine is living from ego or more of his wounded masculine or even his wounded feminine, he's living from wounding, trauma, ego, things like that, he's gonna see the feminine oracle as kind of like a burden and an inconvenience, unfortunately, until he works through that, which is something that generally speaking, men have to do on their own. In the same way that for women, we really have to heal our own traumas and triggers and we have to be a clear channel as the oracle for ourselves. So if we're responding to a masculine partner from our triggers, we're not really being the oracle. If we're responding to our masculine partner from a clear channel of our oracle wisdom, that's a gift to him. There's a difference there. Like say for example, your masculine partner is always late. He's always late, he's not, he never keeps his word, he's always irresponsible. You holding him to a standard of not just letting him slide when he's late all the time, because you know he's capable of keeping his word and being the man that he says he's gonna be. That's different than him running late on some occasion and leaving you because an emergency came up or something like that and because he showed up late that one time it triggered abandonment issues in you of like a time when your father didn't show up for you and now you just blurt out a bunch of stuff that you probably wanted to say to your father and not your partner that's your triggering trauma that's not your oracle that's not your dark feminine oracle wisdom saying you know hey i know you're better than this i know you're a better man than this i'm holding you to this standard that's a different thing than taking out your own past triggers and traumas. So in the same way that the masculine has to work through his triggers and traumas to be able to accept your oracle wisdom, to be able to use your oracle wisdom in order to guide his direction, we as women have to work through our triggers and traumas so that our oracle wisdom is coming from a clear channel and not coming from our past traumas and triggers. Now look, we're all human. We all have traumas and triggers we need to work through. And if we are gonna be in a committed relationship with each other, we're both gonna have to deal with our own traumas and triggers and wounding once in a while because we're all human. None of us are getting into relationships with people who are perfect. But the goal is to be able to work through them so that he is an aligned masculine leader and you are the feminine oracle. Now some of my favorite examples of this is actually, I just did a breakdown of Lord of the Rings, and in reality, if you look at the relationship between Arwen and Aragorn, Arwen literally is an oracle. As an elf and she is a seer, she literally is the feminine oracle. She sees her life with Aragorn, she knows how it's gonna go. And even when she knows that it might be painful, she still opens her heart to him. And when he starts to question himself, she sees the man that he truly is and basically inspires him to step into the man that he truly is. An important thing, she literally is the seer. She's the oracle. She sees their life together. She sees the man that he is capable of being. And that's a really important aspect. Like she literally is a walking oracle. My favorite example of this is actually from one of my favorite breakdowns that I've done and that's the film 300. And in this case, they literally do talk about the oracle. And I dive into this a little bit more in that film breakdown if you wanna watch that deeper. But one of the reasons why I do really love this is that they have these women that are actually called the oracles. And what it is is there's this like these creepy old men that like enslave these young girls in this kind of like sexual enslavement and they use their kind of sexual energy, these young girls' sexual energy to inform them of like their own wisdom. That's actually something culturally that has happened. I've read about other cultures in history that have done that where they essentially like these old men will use these young women for their like open sexual energy as like an inner wisdom because often as women our oracle wisdom is connected to our creativity our sensuality our sexuality it's for the feminine it's all connected these men who are kind of these creepy old men are like using these young girls as these like sex slaves essentially for their oracle wisdom for their inner knowing which is creepy right totally creepy and i'm not gonna lie i do think that that's actually going on now in ways that we kind of don't pay attention to, where we kind of ignore, and that's what a lot of some of these like old men who are like preying on young girls are doing. Not necessarily consciously, like she's gonna be my sexual oracle. That's where you get into like this kind of like toxic male behavior of these men that are just like using these young girls for whatever they can get from them. If you notice in that movie, Leonidas doesn't need to do that because his wife, his queen, 
is his oracle. The queen in that film in 300 truly is the embodiment of a feminine oracle. And there's so many moments in that movie where he looks to her, not for permission. That's something that's actually been misunderstood. I've seen some clips of this. And like when he's deciding whether or not he's going to declare war, essentially, he turns to the queen. She nods her head. Now, some people misinterpret that as her giving him permission. She's literally the wisdom. She's the oracle. She's his heart. He's like, my mind wants me to do this. My mind says this is what I'm supposed to do. He acknowledges that she knows whether he's in his ego or whether he's in alignment. And it's like, hey, am I being clouded by my own ego here or am I in alignment? Am I in my true masculine? Because he knows she's going to tell him. That's the gift. A woman who just gives in to anything that a man wants is not a gift to him. A gift to a man is letting him know when he's in alignment and when he's in his ego. That's a gift to him. Because the more a man is in his aligned, healthy, masculine energy, the better he is to himself, to the world, the more successful he's going to be. If he's just living from ego, he's really no good to anybody. She's letting Leonidas know you're in alignment. This is what you need to do right now. It's not about, it's not, you're not in your ego. You're not making the wrong decision. That's really what it is. The feminine lets the masculine know if he's in his ego or he's in alignment. Because oftentimes when the masculine is in his ego, he may not know that right? Part of the problem with being in the ego. And I have more videos about the ego. It's not just men that have an ego. The ego is a human experience and I have videos where I dive into that much more. I'm not going to get into that right now. That's one of the gifts of the feminine oracle. And one of my favorite scenes in that movie is a scene where you have Leonidas and the queen. Leonidas is basically like, I don't know. I'm in this conflict. She is his heart wisdom. She doesn't tell him what to do in that scene. She's not telling him what to do she basically invites him to make the decision himself. You know, she'll say like, the question is not, you know, what would a king do? What would a Spartan do? The question, my dearest love, is what would a free man do? What she is doing is not telling him what to do. She's reminding him of his priority. His priority is freedom. His priority is to protect his people, to keep his people free from enslavement. That's where the feminine oracle and heart wisdom can come in. If you as the feminine show up and just tell a man what to do, oftentimes he's going to get defensive and be like, okay, whoa, that's going to enact the masculine ego primarily. The feminine oracle, the feminine gift is not telling the masculine what to do, but the feminine oracle is reminding the masculine of what his purpose, what his direction is. He has the purpose and direction, but if he starts to waver, the feminine oracle can remind him, hey, remember what your purpose is? Remember what your direction is? And she can remind him of who he is himself. It's not a matter of coddling him. It's not a matter of babying him. That's not to say that you can't be a loving, nurturing partner, but it's also saying to your masculine partner, hey, you know what? I know the kind of man you're capable of and I wanna see that man. I wanna call on my king. I wanna call on the truly masculine man that I know that you are and I want you to be that man. I want you to stand up as that man that I know you're capable of being. That's the feminine oracle. As the feminine, we see the man that, that our partner has the potential to be, and it's calling on that man. It's calling on him to be that version of himself. That's the beautiful thing. That's, that's the value of the feminine. That's her feminine oracle wisdom, and that's her gift to the masculine. Not just letting him slack off, not just letting him do whatever he wants to do. It's calling on the man that he has the potential to be. I've actually noticed this as a pattern. I've had this conversation with some people online. I find it really interesting too that very often I'll have conversations with men and they will get a little defensive when I talk about masculinity or what masculinity is because a lot of men are not comfortable getting any kind of opinion about masculinity from a woman, which tends to be the masculine ego. It tends to be men who are in more of like the adolescent phase of like you can't tell me what to do like that kind of thing as if I just made up what masculinity is off the top of my head right as if I'm not talking about masculinity from the perspective of many other men especially who have studied masculinity and you know I'm not just making this stuff up like this is stuff that has been studied historically through mythologies through other cultures things like that right but I find it ironic how many times I will have conversations with men like online and stuff where I'll be talking about masculinity and like they won't like what I have to say about it and be like no but men are like this or men are like that or my favorite is like, this is just how men are, or men are just, men are just a slave to their biological urges or things like that. And when I'm like, 
No, actually, I think you're better than that. I think men are better than that. I think men are actually capable of discipline, structure, leadership. I think men are capable of, of being beyond their, their basic primal biological urges. I think men are better than just being a slave to their egos. I think men are better than that. <laughs> the number of guys would be like, no, we're not. Shut up. It's like, well, oh. And then they'll accuse women of trying to emasculate men. I'm like, I'm literally trying to empower you. Like, I'm literally trying to say, I think you're better than that. And you're trying to argue with me that you're not. It's like, who's emasculating who here? It sounds a lot like a lot of these guys are trying to emasculate themselves. And a lot of them are really just a slave to the whole society and the matrix that they're claiming to be fighting which is a whole other conversation and a whole other video i'm not going to get into that in this video probably soon in a future video i can imagine but i'm not going to dive into that so i really hope that my message got across in this video that i want women especially to understand the importance and the power of your heart wisdom of your feminine oracle to know that that is your gift to the world that is truly what you bring to the world Whatever society tells you as far as what your value is in the world, whether it be, you know, how thin you are or, you know, how much money you have or whether or not you're married or not or whether you have kids or not or all those kind of things, like those things are completely separate from your feminine energy and they're completely separate from your heart wisdom. Your heart wisdom, your feminine oracle, that's what helps you connect to your feminine energy. That's what makes you feminine. It's not, you know, whether you wear a dress or pants or whether or not you wear heels or not or whether or not you're married or whether or not you're submissive to your husband like none of those things have anything to do with your feminine energy your feminine energy is your heart wisdom it's your inner oracle it's your feminine oracle that knows the future that knows what's right that sees the future that sees what's going to happen and trusts her heart wisdom, trusts her intuition. That's so important. That's the most important aspect of connecting to your feminine energy. And honestly, the more women embody that about themselves, embrace that about themselves, trust in your own intuition, trust in your heart wisdom, the better off that women are gonna be all over the world. Teaching other women the importance of that I think is incredibly important because the more women that know this and understand this, the better off all women will be and the better off society will be. And I really do think, even though I think there are a lot of men right now, unfortunately, who don't understand that benefit, I think the men who actually have experienced a woman who's truly connected to her heart wisdom, a woman who is actually his oracle, are gonna tell you that that's really the biggest benefit of being in partnership with a feminine woman. Like, that's the benefit. And I would highly recommend you check out my breakdowns of Lord of the Rings and 300. Lord of the Rings is a series, is a long series, but if you actually look up some of the scenes with Arwen and Aragon, and I'm gonna have some clips up of them too, so you'll be able to see some of that. Watching the film 300 for sure, because that's a big, big overarching theme of that is the concept of the king and the queen and like her being the oracle to his masculine leadership. It, that, that's one of my favorite relationship dynamics. I think you'll be able to see that play out a little bit more in, I mean, it is, it is obviously a fantasy movie, but you'll be able to see that play out like in action. So feminine oracle, so important and so undervalued in our world today. I think again, we have a lot of our society that is so into facts and is so into, you know, like what's your source, what's your this. And oftentimes I, I actually pity people sometimes because I'm like, you can't actually tap into your heart. You can't even tap into your own wisdom and figure this out for yourself. Like you need a, a fact, a figure, you need some kind of a stat or something in order to tell you things that you, you can't tap into yourself. Like you can't figure that out for yourself. Like you can't tap into, and a lot of things I talk about, I talk about because it's like, it's an inner knowing, it's an inner wisdom. And then oftentimes I will then see people in science. I have friends who I've talked to who are like PhD in psychology and things. And I'll talk to them about like inner wisdom and inner knowledge. And so many of the things they'll be like, yep, that's backed up by science. Or yep, that's true. We, we have science to back that up. We have science about it. Or, you know, people will throw out stats at me and I'm just like, well, yeah, that's obvious because of this. And that's not because like I'm psychic or I'm so much smarter than everybody else. Like that's just because I've learned to tap into that inner wisdom. And, and every woman out there I really do believe has the potential to do that too. I think every person out there has the potential to do that, but particularly if you're a feminine woman. You have such a capacity for inner knowing. And I think it's a society where we get so caught up in like, well, what's the stat on that? What's the figures on that? Well, your feelings don't matter. Well, your feelings can actually be a big indication of 
you know, signs of things. Your anger can be a sign that something is wrong. Your sadness can be a, a release of something that needs to get out of your body. Your laughter is a response to things that are funny. Like your emotions, your feelings, they, they're valid. They're, they're not wrong. They can help you they can help you tap into your body and your body's emotions and reactions. Those things are not wrong. We have a, a lot of stuff in our society. I'm seeing more and more. It's really ironic that we have such a push in feminism to get women to be equal, but yet we really do have this big push to suppress and hide anything that is feminine. And, and we're doing that to the masculine as well, as far as like masculine men and true masculinity. So I'm not dismissing any of that, but we have this true suppression of things that are truly feminine. In the name of trying to make women equal, we're almost trying to make them into men and actually destroy anything that is actually feminine. Or we convince women that their feminine is solely based on very surface level things like how thin can you be or can you submit to a man or something like that which you know in reality you're not going to submit to a man's leadership if you don't trust him and the only way you're truly going to be able to trust if a man is a safe partner and if you can follow his lead is if you can tap into your feminine oracle and be able to tell if this man is trustable or not because if you can't tap into that for yourself you're going to potentially put your trust in a man that you shouldn't put your trust in, or you're never going to be able to actually trust anybody because you don't trust yourself. It's especially important if you're a woman who has trauma from her past. It's especially important if you're a woman who has put your trust in a partner that you could not trust. Learning to tap into that and to trust your own wisdom and intuition is so important and it's so healing. And I want women especially to learn to value that because if we as women don't value that about ourselves, we can't really expect men to ever value that and we certainly can't expect society to value it if we don't learn to value it ourselves and i understand a lot of women carry what we call a witch wound in history oftentimes when women were truly connected to that divine feminine energy we were seen as a little crazy and we were burned as witches so i know that it can be so painful and it can be so difficult that's where tapping into your inner wild woman comes about. I have a lot of videos on here about the feminine archetypes, but your inner wild woman wants to be part of the unconventional. She doesn't want to follow the path. She wants to follow her own path. She wants to speak up and do things that may not necessarily be in line with what society tells her. She's the woman that when everybody tells her that, you know, she should be, you know, getting a bunch of plastic surgery and, you know, buying a whole bunch of toxic chemically produced makeup products she's the one that's like nope i'm gonna you know get holistic products or i'm gonna start my own holistic medicine practice or i'm gonna become a a, a medicine woman or i'm gonna start growing things in the earth i'm gonna i'm gonna break away from convention that's your inner wild woman and that's gonna help you start to learn to tap into what you truly want what you trust did your parents always tell you that you had to be a doctor but you really don't want to be a doctor you got to trust that about yourself you got to trust in what is your path what is the path that you want to lead what is the path that will bring me to what my heart truly desires tapping into that oracle wisdom is so important and i really want to encourage women especially to just tap into that for yourself because it's so important for yourself but it actually is beneficial to the world i mean to your future children as well but to any you know young girls that might be around you it's an inspiration to them and it's a gift to your partner because when you really tap into your partner what he needs in that moment and i've talked about this before about like like what flavor of feminine energy does he need in that moment is he had a long hard day you know that bringing some sexual energy would really revive him maybe you gift him with that is he really frantic and and really nervous about things and is bringing your soothing soft calming energy like is that going to be a gift to him in that moment is he zoned out and maybe leaving him alone for a while is the best thing for him it's tuning into that and knowing that it's a gift to him now that's not to say that you don't have needs and that he shouldn't be also bringing things to you into the relationship i'm just talking about the feminine oracle wisdom as far as what you would bring to your partner what he gives to you is a separate conversation i'm not going to dive into that in this video but hopefully you have a masculine partner who is bringing his gifts to the relationship and this is how you would be bringing your gifts to him it's gifting him with the flavor of feminine energy the archetype of feminine energy it's gifting those things to him but tapping into your oracle wisdom and knowing which one of those things 
is the right thing to bring to him in that moment because it's the most loving thing for him because hopefully you're with a partner who you love enough so you want to bring those things to because he's filling your cup and that's how you fill his cup is to bring that energy it's not about what you specifically do for him it's what you bring to him of yourself so these are just my thoughts on the feminine oracle women's intuition is something i'm incredibly passionate about i really want to encourage women to tap into that more i could talk about this for like forever yeah i really want to encourage women to learn to embrace and embody this because it's so important to connect your feminine energy and it's an incredible gift to yourself to the world to your partner just it's it's just an incredible incredible gift all around and i think women really need to embrace and embody this so much more yeah if you have any thoughts on this topic or anything else that you would like me to talk about let me know leave a comment in the comment section below i'd love to hear from you and i love your suggestions if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful please give it a big thumbs up and be sure you subscribe to my channel if you're a woman and would like to tap into her feminine energy i have online courses details are in the description box below along with links to all my social media accounts thank you so much for watching and i hope you join me next time